God bless my haters. God bless they cause. God bless these haters. Cause God don't think no bad. gentlemen and thank you for joining us for another edition of the comment section once again i am your boy fox baldwin or emmanuel anzules by day That's right. clap it up, clap it up. unfortunately my co-host shirley phillips cannot be with us today so i am holding down the fort while she is away i know so sad because she's just amazing energy good vibes all around But nonetheless, we have an amazing show for you all. We are going to be talking about mental health issues through comedy. I know it sounds very oxymoronic, but we're going to talk about not only mental health issues, but also mental health issues affecting men, which seems to be a very taboo issue in our society. And I have two amazing guests who are here to just break it down for us and tell us what they do to contribute to the world of mental health and mental health amongst the men's is out there you know so please stay tuned and we will bring them back right after this quick break stay tuned To stay awake at night when it's cold out, and the bugs they bite, and the creatures that I hear while they whisper in my ear, all the good things become clear, and I start to contemplate all the stuff.
And we are back with the comment section, and we have two phenomenal guests here today. They are the comics behind Do You Want to Talk About It, which is not only a comedy show, but also incorporates a lot of therapeutic and therapy kind of messaging in there as well. We have today Josh Ramos and Brendan Higgins. And, yep, I'm here to... <laughs> So I, I just want to know from them what their show, like what is their show about? I know it's both funny and therapeutic yeah. at the same time. So tell us a little more about that. What, is, what does that mean? What does that look like? What is the show about? Like, what is it about? Um, I, I think at the end of the day, it's kind of community building. It, yeah. It's kind of what I realized. Um, do you want to talk about it? So what we do, it, it start, it's a stand-up comedy show at the end of the day. Half of the acts we have are just stand-up comics, you know, who are telling jokes, trying to make you laugh. Um, and then the other half, we, we bring our friends on stage. We kind of, like, dress up as, you know, I, I throw on a turtleneck and a, and a cardigan. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we just let them, like, talk about their problems for six minutes. It's usually pretty funny. But, like, a lot of times it's not funny, and they kind of get to, you know, something good. Um, and it's a really good kind of vibe, you know. It's, it's definitely different than most comedy shows I'm, I'm going to. Um, Almost all of them. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> But, but, yeah, truthfully, like, it, I, I kind of realized it is, like, you know, we're getting a lot of the same friends who are coming to both shows. We, we had 50 at the first one, 56, and then 100 at the, uh, at the second one. Um, and, like, as the show went along, kind of people felt more comfortable, uh, like, I don't know, not blurting out, but it, it, it definitely felt like a... Uh, a lot of crap in there. Yeah. That's interesting. I and mean, you said something that it was kind of like a different kind of comedy show, right? Like, how long have you been doing? I know both of you have been doing comedy to a different degree. How yeah, long yeah. have you been doing comedy? Um, I started when I was a uh, sophomore in college, so like 2012 or 13. Um, I, but, you know, it, I'm, it's, a, it's been a grind. You know, it's like I, I, I did it a lot in the summers, and then I, I've kind of been picking it up for the past year and a half a little bit uh, harder. Um, so, Brendan, is that your day job, or what do you do during the day? Uh, during the day, I am uh, <laughs> not doing a lot. I am currently unemployed. Um, okay, so that gives you time to, you know, be creative and do, yeah, yeah, do what you need 100%. to do on the side. Josh, what about you? Like, how long have you been doing comedy, and what do you do? I mean, I'm acting like I don't know what you do, but I want you to <laughs> share with our audience what it is that you actually do. Um, I've been doing this for maybe 14 months. He actually got me into it. Going cool. to shows together a lot in February 2018, mm -hmm. and just going to shows and seeing what people could do. I just honestly thought that I could like do it better, honestly. And like the people that I liked watching, like Dave Chappelle and like Chris Rock, people that look like me, I was like, these guys are funnier. I think it could be funnier than like the rooms of people I'm watching. So I started doing it, and then uh, we started our show in February, which has been great. Well, we didn't start it; we pitched it. Yeah, and, yeah. We conceived it in February, but I'm day job as a teacher. So I you guys are mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it feels like I'm a definitely the mom. He's the handsome young Dilf. So, That's true. He's yeah. the handsome young Dilf, and you're hang, uh, hang ten, hang yeah. ten. There the you go. Mother. <laughs> Writing milk and cookies after the show. And that's sometimes what you need. You know what I'm saying? Oh, very much so. Yeah. So yeah. together, yeah. this synergy that you guys exactly. brought has just become this new kind of effect on the comedy world. Yeah, so I, there, I I've don't know spoken. We're making that much of a splash yet, but it's, it's I think you are. Fun. I think you are because <laughs> I've, I've spoken to some people that went to your show, like random people, and they had amazing reviews. They oh, said that it was cool. something so different and so powerful. They encouraged me to go see it, but at that point, it was yeah. already after the second show, so I couldn't. Well, we got the go anymore. So third one planned, so we're you know. So I will definitely be there, front and center. Yeah, yeah. Front yeah. and center. So, how do you feel like your type of comedy is going to be something different that is out there? Because there's different kinds of comedy shows out there, right? That are perhaps boring to most people. So, how is your comedy going to be novel or different? Um, give yourself some credit. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like we're doing something not. I, I really feel like the, the the best thing to come out of it is just I don't know. Like when when you're talking about mental health, right? At the end of the day, what what that really is is kind of people looking out for one another. You know, it, it's like everybody's going through something. You may know about it, you may not know about it, but it's there. 
So we just bring up six of our friends, and they, you know, they're willing to give up to the audience what they're going through. And as a result, the audience feels a little bit more willing to give it back, I guess. Um, so that, that's been cool, you know? And it's like, I don't... Yeah. I, it's like in the people that we, you know, that we've been lucky enough to, to get on stage. Like, Andrew's, you know, thing of the first show, which was definitely tough for him, but, like, I... So powerful. So are these people aware that they're going to be coming on stage, or are they yeah, completely yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, blindsided? The first show, we had people that were planned, and then some people that were kind of random came up. One of our very good friends, Charlie yeah. Dees, had a legendary performance memorable, talking about being a, <laughs> he's like a male stripper and like the oh, problems wow. of like sex work and being a stripper and like the things that he has to deal with. And it was hilarious, but also like very like serious. The same An time. eye-opening. Yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about male stripping. So, throughout this whole experience, like, what, besides bringing people up and talking about their problems, how do you prepare to, like, tackle some of the issues that may be brought up? Because if you bring somebody up that doesn't know what it is that you're addressing, right, mm -hmm. how do you determine what questions you're going to ask right. that person? Honestly, I really don't prepare much. I actually ask them, what do you want to talk about? Some people, like, they take it, like, they want to, like, perform, and they have this whole thing that they think about, and they want to, like, workshop with me and ask me for ideas and then some people are like oh i'm just going to talk about this and they just i'm just going to wing it yeah and it really depends on the person but uh i'm like very flexible so if you want to like practice or not tell me like i'll be fine like yeah. my therapist doesn't know what i'm about to tell him before i'd never text him before and say this is what's going on like he just sits there and he just figures it out so i kind of do the same thing interesting yeah that's pretty yeah. cool yeah we're all about matching other people's energy yeah basically that's really cool so you had two shows Mm -hmm. shows. Right, over the last six months. What yeah. is your plan for the next show? Is it going to follow the same format? Are you doing anything different? Um, Do you want something beyond the third show? Um, we definitely want something beyond the third show. Uh, I think one of the differences is we're talking about like a Halloween concept, maybe. Like a, you know, confessions. Like, you know, demons. Like the confessional booth. Maybe get some... Uh, weird religious imagery going on in there. Uh, we have a bigger space, so we could do more with it that we're going to have. So I don't know yet. I didn't think about yeah. maximizing space, like a lot of audience space. <laughs> right. Honestly, with a big-ass audience, we should probably get more audience interaction in this one than the last one, you know, because we, yeah. we didn't have any randoms come up. Everything was planned. We right. Could, we could have that. I'd be down for that. Yeah? Well, yeah. Um, we and then we other than that we're we're working on another monthly comedy show which is not going to be as like mental health focused but uh, it, it'll be at the keg room starting on September seventeenth. Um, cool. Yeah, so, you know we we got a lot in the in the works uh, and it's you know just trying to. I think the third show mm -hmm. someone might record it for a podcast as well. One oh, of our, one of our good friends Javi offered to do that. Cool, he, cool. I was I was thinking of that as soon as you guys mentioned the whole mental health aspect of it and i feel like this needs to be out there a little more right yeah it's what made you guys what inspired you guys to want to tackle mental health through comedy because it's like i mentioned before it's very it's new it's a new concept i don't know we were just uh, talking about what some some venue footlight bar in queens it was like what you got you guys want to do a show here what's it about and then we just texted and he was like i don't know maybe therapy themed and my response was like, oh, wow. I, lo I love that crowd interaction. And then, like, that was it. Yeah, well, we didn't think I, about it too hard. I feel like, yeah, we're just kind of very open with one another, talking about our problems as is. And, you know, it just kind of made sense. Um, I feel like I talk about therapy a lot, too. So it just, like, made sense. Yeah. It's like, one of my. That's the best comedy, right? The comedy that comes from personal yeah. experience. Yeah, and all usually. That stuff. My yeah. therapist is my muse. I love him. Does he laugh when you talk to him? We have the funniest conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's how, you, that's how you know you have a good-ass therapist. Yes. He's the man. <laughs> so many, I, I hook up all my friends up that are in help that, like, need something. Go to of my course. Guy. Yeah, that's how, that's how that works, right? Referrals yeah. from somebody that you know and trust are probably the best. So how do you see your audience take into your show? Like, what kind of people come out to your show? Is it just friends? Is it... Random people, where are you advertising this? I, I feel like it's mostly friends. My parents were there last time. That was pretty cool. I, uh, first time they ever saw me do stand-up. I think, yeah, friends. And then the last show had a lot of coworkers. Uh, also, I feel like people have started bringing, like, 
like my friends started bringing like people that they date to shows and like oh telling their co and like their coworkers have been coming. Like the last show had like well over a hundred people. I, don't, I didn't know like out of that hundred, maybe we knew we didn't know like twenty of them or like which yeah. is more people than I've never seen before. Have seen me do something, which is cool. But promotion, we've just been doing like you know social media, which is hard because I'm a teacher, so I'm like private, you know. So Josh and I work at the same school. Which is right around yeah. the corner. Literally right around the corner from the right studio. Right around the corner. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think of like a really uh, guerrilla marketing strategy for show three since it's a bigger venue. i got to get more heads in there. Yeah, we're thinking about getting a blimp, just flyers out the yin-yang, you know. Yeah, you know. Old this is also, like being on the comment section, comment section is also a good avenue, I guess, to advertise your Come show. Come show. Yeah, Please. like where, where do you say your next show is going to be at? Can we? Uh, I don't. We Can don't have the date it? set. Yeah. So we once we once we kind of secure it with the venue, we'll. we'll yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, you're yeah, a friend yeah. of the show now, so you let us know it. We'll help and have it. Obviously, and I will obviously be there, it's front be and great. center with my oh, yeah. my gang as well. Maybe we'll get you on stage. Oh, yeah. oh do you want to talk about it, guys? I can talk. I can talk about it, but I feel like I have so many so many issues. Are you, ready, about, are you ready honestly, to talk about it? Because I'm ready five, to talk about it. Five minutes goes fast. So the more issues you got to talk about, the more stuff that the, we can bring to the table, yes. like, the better yeah. off, you know? Just I would, I would much rather it. have you go on and another thing <laughs> than, like, you know, twiddling your thumbs. So I feel like I'm a really good specimen when it comes to yeah. anything comedy therapy related because, I, I, I mean, I'm a bit of a hoot, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to bring me on stage, I'm, I'm willing to get on there. Oh, yeah. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what I do want to talk about, and I think we're going to take a quick break before we do that, I do want to talk about mental health within the male community. All right. All right, because I feel like it's still something that's very taboo, and the comment section has actually spoken about this before. And we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. What is it that therapy pushes? What is it about therapy itself or the taboo aspect of it that pushes males away from seeking help? There's so much going on in our society today, so much going on that people really do need to get out there and seek help to fix a lot of the issues that they have, especially issues from childhood or whatever the case is, that they're just not getting the help for. So I do want to tackle that after we take a quick break. Guys, don't forget, if you want to join in on the conversation, you can always call in at 347-640-3920. And we'll be right back with the comment section. And so we are in this journey as we are united. And it's weak as we are divided. Oh, this is wrong. This isn't right. We stand together, united forever to win this fight. What's going on? Like Marvin said, turn on the TV, more innocent lives there. It's time that we should all come together and stand. People choose sides from the lives they've been fed. Over against terror, we fighting over color. Separated and steady, unite with one another. And talk is cheap, actions be louder. Cause all lives matter, all lives matter. If I can bring them all back, I would bring them all back. Mr. President, I think I need a call back. Take a look around us, we can't just ignore that. No es a bien Unidos siempre en la guerra ardiente Podemos vencer We can't win this fight alone We're much stronger together Finding peace within our home
just and inclusive America. You know that constant change has been America's hallmark. That it's not something to fear, but something to embrace. You are willing to carry this hard work of democracy forward. The comment section. We are here with Josh and Brendan, who are the creative geniuses behind the show. What's the name of it? Do well, you want to talk about it? Do you want to talk about creative it? Geniuses. Creative geniuses. Creative geniuses, right. I had to throw that in there because you guys are. I try. I mean, you created this concept. There's nothing else out there like I feel it. like I'm Travis Scott. I'm just the glue. <laughs> I, I think know, like, you are genius. You are a creative genius. You both are, and I give you a lot of props for it, especially trying to tackle so much, like, just the therapeutic and therapy aspect of mm -hmm. what you're doing is major, especially amongst males. So I do want to spend some time talking about that. But before we get into it, don't forget, if you want to call in, you are more than welcome to do so and join the conversation at 347-640-3920. And again, we are talking about mental health amongst the male population within our society. So I want to get more of a perspective from our two guests today, Brendan and Josh, who are behind this new novel idea of therapy meets comedy. Therapy is a big taboo issue, not only with males, right, but I would say also with females and women. But I, I want to get your perspective. What do you think is the problem with males seeking therapy or trying to get help for issues that they have going on? Um, it's, I, a, it's a very yeah, big... Yeah, it's a combination it's a, of factors, right? Yeah. I, I think a, a lot of times people just kind of are afraid to admit they have a problem to begin with, you know, it's um, especially, it's kind of just like masculinity is so built up on sheer strengths, you know, being physically strong and tough and, you know, and um, people see it as like a, a sign of weakness, um, when in reality it's just kind of getting help, you know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't really, it, you end up weaker not seeking it out. Um, and truthfully, I just kind of feel like in 2019, we're, we're just a lonelier people, you know? Yeah. People, people are, spend a lot more time on their own, kind of isolated. Um, and, and, you know, kind of what, I, what I've realized doing the show, it's like it's all kind of, it, you know, talking to people. It, it's the only way that you're really going to cover what, you know, your issues are, get them out. Um, yeah, you, I don't know. You can only self-reflect for so long. Yeah, exactly. Talking mm -hmm. about things helps. Yeah. So you yeah. think masculinity is the reason why men don't go out there and seek help? Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's the whole a idea. A large that, part. A yeah. large you think part. so? Yeah, it starts with, like, the media and, like, yeah. watching, like, little kids interact. You can kind of see it starts to blossom on its own. It's, like, the tough guy aspect and, like, you know, not, not crying and things like that. Like, don't be emotional. Toxic masculinity. Yeah, all that starts really young, like, whether in the household or on, like, TV. That starts, like, really, really young. Uh, luck luckily, that's kind of, like, shifting nowadays, kind of, yeah. in the media, which is kind of cool. But, like, it still happens a lot. Started like, with Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano Talked did do, me. yeah, they did do a lot for masculinity and therapy. People forget about the Sopranos. I haven't. No. <laughs> and then there were those movies, like, Analyze This, Analyze That. Yo, right. that's great stuff. Yeah, that's actually and that great. was in the 90s also. Yeah, De Niro. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. Wow. Talking about comics, right? So Yeah, yeah there you <laughs> go. Great, great comic. Um, what do you think people associate with therapy? Honestly, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, when I first started going to a therapist, what I was worried about was the economic barriers. I was like, my really, like, you know, it's, it's money, and a lot of times when people are stressed out about it, is their financial situation. That's true. So they see it as something that could be a potential burden on top of that. Um, hmm. I think other people think that they you're automatically like depressed. Right. Yeah. It might not be that. It could be like you know anxiety. Any number of things. Any number of things. Do you really. think there's a difference between not only socioeconomic status but also like cultural and racial barriers that propels people to seek therapy? Yeah. One group more than another. Do you think white people are more likely to go out and get help with mental health? Or do yes. you feel like it's... <laughs> yes. doomed? Yeah, why do you yeah. think that is? Uh, I've wondered this before, too. Like, why is it that white people are more likely to... Uh, 
I don't know, okay. but uh, I don't know. I think there's just a lot of white people are less concerned with, I think, labels in terms of like uh, medical diagnosis. Just as a special education teacher, I know that most kids uh, that like are sped are like brown kids usually, and like it could be a sense of shame a lot. But I feel like for the white kids I know that you know had problems in college, they're very open about it. They didn't like care. They would talk about it. You know, they were prescribed this, they were prescribed that. Versus I know that, as a teacher, I know that there are brown kids who have all these types of things, but, like, my friends who are my adult friends, they never talk about it, but statistically, like, some of you must have something, like, just, like, but we yeah. don't talk about it. But white people talk about things more, I feel like. They're more, more You're giving yeah, uh, too much credit. No, I, <laughs> no they're well, Tell awful. us, Brendan, as a, as a white um, man. Tell us, tell us. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, a lot of rich white people just like throwing money at their problems. That's so true. it's like, oh, my kid is crying. You know, it's like getting him an SAT tutor for his emotions, basically. Gotcha. Um, that's a little pessimistic. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, 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 I guess I haven't given enough thought. To that, specifically? Yeah. Do you think you have a lot of white yeah. friends in therapy? Um... I feel like it... Hmm. Now as adults, like, do you feel like you have a lot of friends that are more likely to... Just see, I feel like it, the more... Yeah. It, the, it's kind of like tribalized based off of what job people have almost. Like, I feel like a lot of my friends who are teachers are very kind of, you know, open. You, they, you work with kids, you have to talk to these incredibly emotional beings and help shape their lives. So it's yeah. a subject matter you're more comfortable with. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to, where, I, I worked in tech sales, it's kind of, I, I, I think at the least nature, people weren't talking about going the to The nature of that job is also so different, right? Like, right, yeah. See, the teaching profession is so emotional and so emotionally driven that it's, it's a topic that you're bound to hit and you can't avoid it right. by any means, right? Do you feel like people are more likely to get therapy once they're older on their own accord versus having their parents take them in knowing yeah, that they yeah, have you, stuff going on you definitely don't really want to talk to your parents about most of the stuff i feel like if you're in therapy your parents are probably coming up some quite sometimes every now and then probably josh you and i work with kids who are, i feel are very empowered when it comes to wanting to get help from a counselor yes and that's just because we give them the resources and talk about it all the time and we're like this is here for you there's something mm. going on that's here for you. And it's like a kid can just say to any teacher, hey, can you get my social worker? Like, I'm emotional right now. I need yeah. to go talk to someone. And right? then we have resources for them to go to, even if they don't have a social worker that they can talk to at that moment. You know, there's a dean's office. They can hang out, relax, you know, take a deep breath, be mindful, all that good stuff. Do you think that's what it takes with adult males? Um, like letting them know that there are resources at their disposal and then having them take advantage of that? Is that what will fix? I mean, when there are resources available, you know, I had a, there's an unfortunate um, situation. I had a friend who was incarcerated in Manhattan mm -hmm. um, who, you know, he, he attempted his own life and um, was so lucky. Uh, Jeffrey, you know, we, we all, <laughs> uh, Jeff Epstein, uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he didn't have the resources. Too soon, too soon? <laughs> no, not soon not enough. enough. Not